We're standing outside the Digital Computer Laboratory at the University of Illinois. Inside are plenty of young engineers showcasing their talents for the engineering open house. But that's not why we're here today. Today we're going to go inside and see my bioengineering lab. Let's go. Welcome to my lab, my home away from home, the place where I can transmit my passion for science to university students. In this room, I teach the classical subject of mammalian histology to pre-medical and pre-veterinary students in the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology. While I adore histology, I really look forward to teaching my course to bioengineering students about the cutting edge techniques of cell culture and the concepts of tissue engineering. To fully appreciate all that tissue engineering encompasses, ideally one understands many different concepts including those of embryogenesis, angiogenesis, adult and stem cell biology, material science, histology, and the cell culture techniques that we run in this course. While we teach a lot of wonderful experiments in this outer lab area, in my personal opinion, I think we have the most fun back in the cell culture room. Why don't you join me there now? As we will be entering a fairly aseptic area and we don't want to introduce any extra microorganisms, we follow some simple guidelines, such as removing all rings, watches, bracelets, and pulling back long hair, pushing up our sleeves, and washing our hands. I've checked my cultures today and saw that the cells were very crowded on the tissue culture dish, so what I'm going to do is move some of these cells to a new dish. Working with the cells in a biosafety cabinet allows us to prevent the introduction of any extra microorganisms into the culture. It also protects the researcher from any potential hazard that could be in the culture from reaching us. For stem cell researchers, the understanding of embryogenesis up to this point has facilitated the manipulation of the cells in order to direct their growth to the formation of new tissue. Conversely, understanding the cellular molecular mechanisms that we can see while using stem cells helps us further understand what is happening during embryonic development. One of the points we try to introduce to the students is that if we change the environment the cells are in, the cells will change, produce different proteins, and possibly create an entirely different tissue. One of the experiments we conduct in this lab is to take fibroblasts, the cells that are in the dermis of the skin or the tendons of the body, and we feed them caffeine, sugar, and fat, basically coffee and donuts, and then the cells will change into adipocytes the fat cells of the body. This is just one of the many experiments we conduct to demonstrate the concept of differentiation in cell culture. Scientists working at a university level need to be aware of the ethical and moral questions that can arise when they use stem cells and create new tissues through tissue engineering to be implanted into the body. I'm pretty confident in my students' ability to have grasped the concepts of tissue engineering. I want to check on their projects. This has turned out even better than I could ever imagine. 